OK, so we're ready to write the code to make this cowboy run back and forth and activate its running cycle. Now we've downloaded the website, the, we've downloaded the flash file. So we've downloaded the flash file from my website at www.danscourses.com. I've downloaded the file here. I've opened it up in Flash, right? And I've opened up the ActionScript keyframe here. So I select the keyframe with ActionScript, go to Window Actions, or open up your ActionScript window, and I've commented out the code. So I've put a forward slash asterisk on the front of the code, and then all the way at the bottom, I put an asterisk forward slash. Now this comments out the whole piece of code, and we can start from scratch. So how do we make this work? Well, first of all, we need the movie clip, right? The movie clip is here. Its instance name is Cowboy, and you're going to need to remember that because we're going to be targeting this instance name in our code. So the basic code is this. You, need, you have two functions. First of all, you have this function right here, function move cowboy, right? And you need to close the function there. So there's the function. Function, the name of the function is move cowboy with capital C, open and close parentheses, and then an open curly brace and a close curly brace, right? Now inside here, I'll put a, let's say, trace, and then we'll just put hello. Okay, and we'll put a trace statement in there. And then the second part of this code that's going to make the cowboy run back and forth using keyboard key presses is this piece right here. And I'll copy that and paste that. Now this piece right here is this, meaning this timeline, scene one, on enter frame handler, which is a function. Now, so we've got two functions. We've got the function move cowboy, and inside it we've put the trace hello, and then this dot on enter frame equals a function right here. And whatever we put in here will get called over and over and over again. So in other words, the way this function works is that an on enter frame handler will execute the function at however many times per second is at the frame rate. So if our frame rate is 24 frames per second, whatever's in here will be executed at the frame rate. So in other words, if I put in here trace the number one, right, and hit control enter, you can see there's all these ones being output to the output window, right? Okay? So this will be called at whatever the frame rate is. So the trace statement, tracing one to the output window is happening 24 times a second. But what I can do is I can say instead, I can say how about instead of the trace function, let's call the move cowboy function. So we'll say move cowboy, right? And we, can, we don't have to we just close that. So move cowboy, this calls the function effectively. And if the function move cowboy is called, we should see the string hello trace to the output window 24 times per second. So let's see if that works. We'll hit control enter on the keyboard and you can see there's all the hellos and you can't really tell but um, it's happening at a very fast frame rate so you can't even tell. But You can see here if I scroll there's a lot of hellos happening here. See it? The cursor flying up so this is repeated over and over again until I close my flash movie. All right, so now, now that we know that, we can say, all right, well, that works. All right, so this is effectively calling the move cowboy function 24 times per second. So now all we need to do is inside of this move cowboy function, which we've created, we just need to put the statements that will move the cowboy. And that's what we're going to do right now. So let's add a little bit more to our function move cowboy to get this to work. So what I'll do is I'll go down here to the code and I'll copy the first if statement that's in the code. Copy and I'll paste that in here and then we'll talk about it. So what this says, it says if it's going to basically run a conditional statement and say if key, and this needs to be a capital K so it turns blue, is down, capital D, and then this is key, capital K, and then all capitals right. So that is the right arrow key. So if key is down, key dot right. That tests to see if the right 
arrow key on my keyboard is pressed. And if it is, then we're going to make a variable on the fly called dx. Now I chose dx, right, for, I chose it so that the dx would stand for basically distance x. And I load distance x with a number 10. So that's going to basically say, hey, we want to move the cowboy probably 10 pixels. That'll be the increment that we're going to move the cowboy. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the cowboy. If you remember in the movie clip, the cowboy is, when we double click on it, if we look at the timeline, the cowboy is always running left, right? There is no running right. So if we want the cowboy to run right, what we're going to have to do is, back in scene one, is flip this cowboy, basically flip him on the horizontal x-axis to make him run to the right. So basically, let's see if that can... So, what we, to do that, we target him saying instance name cowboy dot underscore x scale, right, his x scale, and if we turn the x scale to negative 100%, that effectively flips him to the right, right? So if key is down key right, dx equals 10, and the cowboy's x scale equals negative 100. So in other words, control enter, there he is, I press the right arrow key, and he just switched to the right. Did you see that? It's only going to happen once. Control enter, if I press the right arrow key, he flips to the right. Okay, so there's the first part. Now, the second part. We have an else if, right, and then an else. I'll grab the whole thing. Okay, so the next part is this. Else, if key is down key left, we're going to make dx equal to negative 10, which will move him effectively 10 pixels to the left. Negative 10, we're going to target for x movement going to the left, and 10 pixels will be uh, moving to the right on the x-axis. And of course, the cowboy x scale equals positive 100%, right? So key down, key right, key left, else dx equals zero. So if we press the right arrow, the distance that we're going to move is 10 pixels, which will be to the right. If we press the left arrow, the distance x will be negative 10, which will move them to the left. Else, if we're not pressing any keys, right, dx equals zero, we're not going to move the cowboy at all. Now let's run this and see what happens, right? If I press the right arrow, he turns to the right. If I press the left arrow, he turns to the left, right? But he's not actually moving. He's not moving at all. Now what's going to do that is the next line of code. And the next line of code is this one right here. Cowboy.underscore_x plus equal dx. So if we copy this and paste this up here, you'll see that this next line of code, and notice that this next line of code is outside of these if statements, right? So these if statements, you have if, and then an else if, and then an else, right? This is basically one nice block right here. Now, this cowboy dot underscore x plus equals dx. So if dx is equal to zero and we're not pressing any buttons, his x position or his x property will not move at all. But if it's negative 10 or 10, it's going to increment, right, plus equal, will add 10, and then retotal the, the sum of the cowboy's x property. So let's give it a try. We hit Control Enter, we press the right arrow, and he starts sliding to the right. We press the left arrow on the left key, and he starts, he flips and starts uh, moving to the left, right? Flips again, moves to the right. Notice when I let go of the key, Right? His movement goes back to zero, dx goes back to zero. So even though dx is being added, right, this is constantly being incremented 24 times per second. If dx is equal to zero, his movement doesn't change. So now for the next piece. 